Hi, got a real interesting bit of kit for teardown for you today. This is a Schaffner, oh, made in Switzerland. Hi to all my Swiss viewers. The NSG 200 mains interference simulation system. And I scored this from the uh, that big dumpster that uh, was outside of a, in a company who still shall remain nameless, even though... This one actually has Alcatel Australia part numbers on it. No, it wasn't Alcatel. And someone called the Standard Telephone and Cables Proprietary Limited. Um, no, it wasn't them either. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. So what this bit of kit is for is for like um, EMC and compliance testing houses that actually test your products for various uh, standards and susceptibility and things like that. And depending on the type of product, uh, you may have to, like a mains powered product, you may have to test it for various uh, mains disturbances, dropouts, um, like lightning strikes on the mains and things like that, surges and bursts and other motors switching on on the mains or relays uh, clicking and, you know, loads switching off and on. All these little uh, transients and pulses on the mains, if you want to ensure that your product survives these, you need one of these things and uh, generally you'll only find these in uh, test houses you might find them inside some you know uh, companies developing mains powered products and things like that but uh, it really is a very specialized bit of kit and it is a, actually a mainframe based system it's the NSG 200 mainframe which is just this main power supply over here and then you can get all these different plug-in modules and we should be able to take this one out um, this is the NSG 222A but you can get a uh, like half a dozen different modules for this uh, system that simulate things like mains dropout, for example, uh, DC dropout, if you've got a DC powered uh, product, uh, this one, which is the um, fast pulse uh, interference simulator, this one actually uh, tests 100 nanosecond pulses with a rise time of either 5 or 10 nanoseconds here. So really fast pulses designed to simulate things like, you know, loads switching off and on very fast on the mains that can, uh, well, elsewhere on the mains that can cause interference to your particular uh, product. And this is, this is its only job. Its only job is to generate these 100 nanosecond pulses at various amplitudes up to several kilovolts. And there's a, apparently a standard for this, the 4517 slash 79. I don't know. I can't really find any information on it. I may, maybe you've gone into a more like a recent standard. This, uh, you know, this is a fairly old uh, bit of kit, but this would still be used in test houses, no doubt. So in addition to the fast simulation pulses, you can get other types of bursts and also high energy pulses up to, you know, five kilovolts, you know, things like that, like real high energy uh, pulses into the mains. This one's just designed for um, not, I don't think it's necessarily high energy, but uh, fast Fast amplitude pulses from like uh, tens of volts, like 50 volts minimum, I think, up to uh, several kilovolts. So I have no idea if this thing works, but let's have a look. I actually want to turn it on before I take it apart, just to see what the state of it is. And on the back of it here, you can see that it all must uh, connect internally. There must be like, uh, you know, like uh, contacts inside or uh, something like that. I'd be surprised if it's a cable-based system going over probably some contact base system and there's the details for those playing along at home we've got the mains um just the standard mains input but also for the uh, test supply of the product that, that you're actually uh testing so we can uh plug well let's just plug this one in first and uh see if it at least powers up so I don't know why exactly a bit of kit like this will be thrown out. They're ridiculously uh, expensive, specialised bits of kit. Maybe it's just obsolete. It doesn't suit the new standards anymore. And they have no uh, use for it. So let's power this on. I don't know what... Oh, yay. Look at that. Ha <laughs> ha. Pulse amplitude. Sweet. I can hear something going buzz. So, oh, pulse. There we go. And that'll go all the way with LBJ up to how many kilovolts? Should be a couple of kilovolts. Yep, yep, 2.2 kilovolts we can go up to. And we can, ooh, there we go, external pulse. We can apply the pulse or we can feed in an external uh, pulse from here. I, yeah, I think they've tossed this out. I think, I'd be surprised if there's anything wrong with this actually i you know confidence is high i repeat confidence is high
And sure enough, if we plug uh, 240 volts into the second uh, test supply socket over there, and we hit the big test supply button here, bingo, we got our 240 volts to, uh, here in the lab, 247 volts AC. So we should be able to apply, here's a little 100 volt pulse. Boop, boop. Of course, we won't see anything on the multimeter. Looks like we're going to have to get the scope out and a high voltage probe. Just want to show you this. When I put it on uh, free run in frequency here, just listen to this. You can hear it. And then when I switch it over to 0.2 FL, you can hear like a relay switching in there. Neat, huh? I think that sound, that actually sounds like a relay switching. Whoa, unfortunately the magic smoke has escaped. Whoa, <laughs> something went snap, crackle and pop. Damn it. So, oops, um, yeah, something went horribly wrong here. It's a week later. Is it two weeks later? I don't know. This thing actually I panicked. It was releasing uh, so much smoke. Panicked, had to put it in a cardboard box to uh, uh, you know, stop the smoke from uh, setting off the fire alarm in the building here. And yeah, well, let's take a look inside and see what's wrong with it. it I think it was mostly coming from like this power supply section over here so yeah let's get into it and yep even after that time oh, <coughs> oh that's that's not good slide that out and yep as predicted a contact based system wow that's a doozy isn't it Look at the size of that but then again this is like a high energy uh thing so that's impressive wow um, oops, I, <laughs> taking out the screws from there, I thought maybe this might slide out as well. I didn't think it did, but, um, yeah, oops, not, that's just the loosey-goosey front panel. And the back panel, surprise, surprise, which brand filter do, does a Schaffner bit of kit use? Well, uses a Schaffner filter, of course, <laughs> top notch. And they're serious about that earth in too, aren't they? Very nice, done right, as you'd expect. Whoa, check this bad boy out. Oh, let me show you the detail. This transformer is actually wound with solid copper, like bus bar things. These aren't just like, <laughs> this isn't just regular, like enamel coated piss ant wire. These are like solid, so <laughs> thick as, look at that. Like you cannot, move though cannot budge them they are thick solid bus bars that's incredible I actually you could get the calipers on that for those playing along at home it's about 3.1 millimeters by 2.2 millimeters thick i think we can see our problem you can just see the thickness of the <laughs> the bus bar i'm just going to call them bus bar windings because they're just like absolutely enormous but that is that where our smoke has come from look it's dripped down there. It's got that telltale sign of, of having dripped off. Wow, you can just get a feeling for those windings. Unbelievable, yeah. That's, that's where the magic smoke escaped from. And uh, not sure why or how that did it, because it's not like we were loading the thing down. She's burned away, so yeah, it's, it's not going to be able to ease in to fix something like this. And you can see here that the, uh, well, it's, I'm not going to call it the primary and the secondary because it's not, because uh, this doesn't look like it's doing a uh, transformer operation. It looks like a huge choke. It's, it's just burnt that top bit and then dripped down. It's really strange. So maybe, you know, some uh, like breakdown between one of the windings in there perhaps, but geez. <laughs> now in terms of uh, operation here, We've got uh, 50, 60 hertz, like, tap, I guess, and 400 hertz. Look at that. That's really interesting. But I'm not sure how, like, it, or <laughs> how it, like, selects 400 hertz or 50, 60 hertz. There's no, like, selection for this. This thing, there's no, f well, it's got 50, 60 hertz on the label here. But, uh, yeah, like, it's all hooked up. So, like, so I'm not sure what the deal is there but there's not much on the board at all the mains input uh, here that just goes over to the switch on the front and then that's also routed to the board probably for some switching and then goes over to a terminal block here which then 
is going to bugger off, which then comes, uh, just goes directly into these contacts here. So like this is not a transformer for the modules. The modules basically have their own 240 volts input. So the modules will have their own uh, local transformer to uh, do whatever uh, power requirements that they have. This block here, which is uh, Schaffner branded, made in Switzerland. Hold on, all my Swiss viewers again. Um, it's like just a big potted monolithic block. I'm not sure if you can see that down there, but that's an ITT cap made in West Germany. Not this East German rubbish. Now I did finally find a schematic for this thing, and as it turns out, this uh, giant transformer here is actually a, a 16 millihenry common mode choke and this uh, Schaffner RF529 big potted unit here is a, uh, a massive filter and the board is just basically um, some extra like uh, filtering uh, type stuff but yeah there's not much to it at all but this is an absolute beast so I'm not sure what happened to uh, like burn this uh, common mode choke that's just Nuts. So that uh, 400 hertz, 50, 60 hertz labeling there, which seems to label like each different uh, like tap there, so to speak, um, that's a furphy because this is a common mode choke. There's no switching or anything uh, based on frequency. It's just there. So yeah, that labeling's a bit. <laughs> Don't know why they did that. Wow, inside the injection module isn't that sweet so we've got our <laughs> big ass contacts coming in here i love that that's absolutely brilliant but that is really quite neat there's not you know a lot of uh space in there but that's very neatly laid out we've got the uh the control side of it all over here which of course because it's got to do the uh display it's measuring oh look <laughs> that chip's almost falling out <laughs> check that out i've never seen that that chippy's almost falling out. That is hilarious. Oh. <laughs> I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. There's nothing too exciting on this uh, board over here, but I like their little uh, nice little regulation, local regulation block down there. Little heat sink block, that's very nice. It, uh, they've got sill pads on each one. It ties into the uh, chassis down there. Beautiful. And uh, of course, we've got a mains transformer here. 240 volts just comes in on the uh, bottom side here. Whoa. Oh, that's an Elko. It's an Elko. For all you Elko fanboys, it's upside down, so all the electrons are going to fall out. But, ah, oh, geez, you don't see many Elkos. And what's interesting about the rest of it is it's all uh, like, you know, 4000 series stuff. None of this uh, TTL rubbish. And the only microcontroller you can see in there is for the uh, display panel board where they've rolled their own display panel board. <laughs> it's got its own little trimmer for calibration and everything else. So I'd say they've actually uh, designed that for maybe, you know, a few different products. Look, it's got decimal point here, 99.9, 9.99. So, you know, that's really neat. It's probably used in uh, several different uh, Schaffner designs, I'd be willing to bet. The oh, wires just soldered onto the curled legs of the lead there. <laughs> Pretty how you doing? But all the interesting stuff is over on this injection PCB over here, I'll call it for want of a better name, because that's really what it's doing. Check out the lead length they're getting on that power resistor just flapping around in the breeze there. Wow. And they've put uh, an insulated uh, sleeve over the leg there as well. That one has the, <laughs> the little alien crop circle in there. Um, they just needed some extra inductance, I guess. Yeah, oh, these black jobs here, these are actually uh, Keiko relays. I don't know those offhand, but um, they're huge beasts. Look at that. We might actually be able to, can we just like pry it off there maybe? Yep, I got him. <laughs> Check that out. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Lovely relay. You can see the contacts down in there like that. And she pulls it in. Excite the uh, coil and... That's beautiful. That's actually a, uh, there you go, double pole, double throw contact. Neat. Check this out. This is really interesting. You've got these mechanical buttons here, of course, which have these, just the mechanical uh, in indicator in there. Just a little uh, shutter, which, which just covers and uncovers that. Because this is like a real, you know, a high voltage, high power thing. You want it physically decoupled. So here's the mechanical 
switch here and it must have like a steel wire which goes around this bend here and the actual switch is up on the PCB here. So if I press that, <laughs> that's where your 10 nanosecond pulse switch is on the PCB, physically and electrically decoupled from the <laughs> poor ass user pressing the button on the front. Aha, uh -huh, so maybe that's what our little crop circle is there. Maybe that's a little bit of delay. But the problem with that theory is that uh, the normally it's a hundred nanoseconds delay and you can switch in the 10 nanoseconds. So it's not like, you know, that little uh, coil of wire is going to add 90 nanoseconds in there. That's uh, just not going to happen. Yeah, anyway, it's switching in some sort of element which changes the uh, pulse width. This gigantic orange job here is a huge high voltage read relay or just a yeah, a high voltage relay. Sweet. Apart from that, there's not a huge amount extra. Another little custom wound transformer down there. A board to board interconnect uses the good old fashioned uh, dip socket arrangement. But look, they got some copper tape on top of that. The copper tape actually terminates on this side of the shield. They don't want anything coupling into that uh, ribbon cable going between the logic and the pulsar board. Obviously they need that because you've got lots of fast high voltage switching in here. So huge uh, DIVT, a, a change in current over time, you don't want that to couple into your ribbon cable and back into your logic circuitry. Just attached at the one point on this side here, and basically just down to chassis earth. A whole bunch of huge caps in there. There you go, rated for six kilovolts. Wow. Yeah, another six kilovolt job. Then you've got these huge wire wound inductors here done by Schaffner, made in Switzerland. So some nude virgin in Switzerland uh, sat there and wound these and uh, heat shrunk them. And they're on there with a nice big uh, high voltage standoff. Another one of these mysterious uh, potted uh, filter blocks down there. You can see that just uh, they go off because um, it's it's actually symmetrical on the line here and it goes off the active and the neutral so to speak but in terms of uh, doing pulse injection like this it's L1 and L2 they call it and all the connections just look brilliant so they uh, n go over to either the banana jacks on the front or they go or they jump over with this brown wire here over to the uh, European test socket and I'd say that's your main cap there, storing the charge. That's a 4,000 volt jobby, 0.04 MFD. None of this uh, millifarad rubbish. This is microfarads. So um, 47N, 4,000 volts. Uh, do the math. That's how much energy um, that they can dump into this thing. And the whole rest of it's just a, you know, and just the mechanism to actually inject uh, the pulse onto the mains. So there's really not much else inside that, but it is fascinating um, to look inside like a high voltage test injection system like this. And it's really not something that you'd ordinarily get to have a look inside. As I said, this is a very specialized bit of kit. So <laughs> that was a great find to find in the dumpster. And I think this uh, injection module uh, just works or interference simulator um, a module likely works okay it's just that yeah we've had some sort of uh, winding failure in the uh, common mode choke on the input so you could potentially try and like take that apart and I don't know try and repair it maybe but yeah it, <laughs> certainly a fair bit of smoke did escape from it so it's not a happy little puppy but anyway Hope you found that interesting, and if anyone's got access to a schematic for this, um, please, I'd love to see it, because I wasn't able to uh, find one, because that'd be fascinating just to see exactly how they uh, implement uh, this pulse injection onto the mains. And as always, I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, please give it a big thumbs up, and you can always discuss down below or over on the EEV Log Forum. Catch you next time. Hello.